God loves you and He forgives you for anything. And He not only does that, He forgets it. Yeah. And, you know, once in a while, I'll still have a bad dream about my dad. But for all intents and purposes, I feel like even when I talk about it, like it's something that happened to somebody I used to know mm -hmm. long, long time ago. Because when you're, when you're in Christ, you become a new creature. Mm -hmm. And old things pass away. What about people um, that you know there's not going to be any reconciliation? Is there such a thing? Well, first of all, you never know that. Yeah. I mean, you never know that. Now you're kicking her butt, yeah. right? So no, look at her. No. I mean, <laughs> wait, with God, all Fair things question. are possible. I mean, well, for my dad to yeah. receive Christ, ask me to baptize him. Yeah. And I mean, I mm -hmm. saw a definite change in that man. He had a filthy mouth mm -hmm. before that. Never heard him use a curse word after that. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. He Isn't definitely, I mean, you know, he wasted his whole life. Sure. And my mother spent her whole life feeling guilty. You know, so sin does come with consequences. Sure. But, I, you know, I think I really want to make sure that people watching understand that to love somebody, you don't even have to be around them. Right. You know, I, I don't want them to misunderstand that. You know, sometimes somebody's being ignorant to you and you just get away from them and get out of their space. You don't have to have them for a friend. You don't have mm -hmm. to, you know, maybe you quit that job, go get another one. But that's helpful. Yeah. By the way, you know, you don't you don't have to be around them if, you know, I mean, I, we had somebody that worked for us one time pretty close and for a long time. And I knew the girl didn't like me and I didn't like her. <laughs> and it was just challenging for us to work together and I went to a pastor friend of mine and I said do I have to work with them and he said no you got to love them because you don't have to work with them and we still support their ministry and I will for as long as I'm around I you know they're giving to people that have hurt you it heals your heart it's like it does something inside you that only God can do. And I had a situation, well, I don't want to get off too many stories because I want, I want people at home to understand that I'm not asking you to do something that's impossible. I'm telling you this is for you. Mm. You deserve it, you know. Don't, don't stay mad, don't stay angry. Don't be mad about something that happened to you when you were a kid that there's no way you can go back and fix. Ask God to take it and work good out of it. Yeah. Look what God has done with my story. Yeah. With let him turn your message into a miracle or your mess into a message or into a miracle. God promises in Isaiah 61, 7, that he will give us, he, he will undo the shame of our youth. Wow. And he will give us a twofold recompense for the pain we've suffered in the past. Mm -hmm. That's a reward. Yeah. And I believe that God is rewarding me by allowing me to do what he's allowing me to do. And you just have no idea how much I appreciate being on here today and just being able to tell the whole world, mm -hmm. you know, God loves you and he forgives you for anything and he not only does that, he forgets it. Yeah. And, you know, once in a while, I'll still have a bad dream about my dad. But for all intents and purposes, I feel like even when I talk about it, like it's something that happened to somebody I used to know oh my mm -hmm. goodness. long, long time ago. Yes. Because when you're, when you're in Christ, you become a new creature. Mm. And old things pass away. And God can renew your mind. He can cause you to, for me... Believing the best of people has helped me. I don't even know how to tell you how much that's helped me because it is your choice. You can believe you did that on purpose or you can believe you didn't really understand what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Like my dad said, I, he knew it was wrong. He wouldn't have hit it otherwise. He knew it was wrong. But he really didn't understand totally what he was doing to me. Nobody, nobody talked about any of that. Yeah. You just you didn't talk about it. And uh, so please understand, I'm not asking you to be abused. I'm not asking you to stay with somebody who is, you know, 
drunk all the time and running around with other women. I'm not asking you to do that, but you can get 10,000 miles away from them and you can still love them from a distance yeah. because you can pray for them every day, ask God to bless them. And if you hear that they're in trouble and you feel like God wants you to do something to help them, you can help them. And I think to me, that's the most powerful thing is when you start doing things for people that have hurt you. So this is kind of a master class in regard to this subject. I don't think I've heard this intimate of a kind of a horrible story line that you now can think back like it's almost somebody else's yeah, it's story. Like, it's almost, yeah. you know, so God has completely healed it. The, so the idea that you're the one that wrote this book, loving people who are hard to love, uh, you have qualified to write this book in so you're writing it from the other everybody's, side. Yeah. Yeah. everybody's estimation. So how much, in other words, when, when, when somebody needs this because it's a challenging issue in their life, they get this book, then step us through um, kind of what, what's, what's day one after we've read your book and what's day two what does that feel like? What is that like? Is there something you can give us kind of this head start to understand? Well, the uh, first thing you do is you start by telling God, I want to obey you. Mm -hmm. But it's very challenging for me to forgive because of the pain that this person caused me. So please give me the grace to be obedient to you because I, I want to to be obedient to you. So I'm gonna start by saying, Jesus, in your name, I forgive them for everything that they did to me. And you pray, I ask you to bless them. I ask you to speak truth to them. I pray that you will heal them from whatever it was that caused them to behave this way. Hmm. And if there is anything that you want me to do for them, you let me know. And you study the Bible on love. That, that has been my main theme for several years now. And I could, I have to have different stuff for TV all the time, but if I didn't, I'd preach on love everywhere that I go. Because people have got this idea in their head and I have to keep harping on this. It's just so hard, it's so hard, it's so hard. Or it's not fair, it's not right, it's not just. But all you have to do is look at what Jesus did. Yeah. Mm. And he would not tell us to do it if we couldn't. Mm. Three, three, what is the most important commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And some of you watching in this last minute that we have here, I just want to tell you that you're having a hard time loving other people because you don't love yourself. Mm. And you're not supposed to love yourself in a selfish, self-centered way, but you love the you that God has created with his own hand in your mother's womb. And he says you're precious. And loving yourself is only receiving God's love. When you receive that and you let that love heal you, then you will just become sweeter and you will be able then to start giving away what you have in yourself.